This video is going to be our first steps with intermediate plotting. And mostly what I'm going to show you now is how to get multiple variables onto some of the plots we've already looked at. That is, we've had a lot of one variable plots. But what's more interesting is when you can start making comparisons across groups. So what you'd like to know is, does the diets, different diets for chickens' weights, affect their weights? You want to know how the different diets affect the chickens' weights. And what you need to do for that is get multiple variables, at least two variables, onto one plot. So let's start our first steps with intermediate plotting by trying to plot two variables onto one plot. So we're going to use the library ggplot2. We're going to use the data set chick weight. And for the most part, we're going to use the variables diet as a factor variable and weight as a numeric variable. Now let's just start out with things we've seen before, where we look at a density plot of the continuous numeric variable weight. So we've seen this plot before, and we see that weight is mostly right skewed. That is, there is a long right tail going up to very big values of weight. But we recognize that there's multiple diets. So if you want to just do a quick check, you can ask for all the unique values of the variable diet that lives within the data frame chick weight. And it turns out all the unique values of the diet are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in fact, we know that there's four different diets given to these chickens based to try to affect their weight. So the easiest thing to do to get diet as a second variable onto our data set is to extend the aesthetics. And there's an aesthetic named color where you just put in, careful with that capital D, the variable diet to give us different colors. So what we should see on this density plot then is four different density plots, one for each level of diet. And thankfully, a legend pops up automatically to show us that this orangey pink looking maybe coral or salmon color is the most right skewed of the weights. Green is the second diet, it's a little bit less skewed, and three and four have a little bit fatter right tails and a little bit less tall of a mode over here. So that's actually really informative because what it's showing us is that there weren't so many chickens for diets three and four that had small weights, but there was relatively more chickens who had uh, bigger weights for diets three and four. So diets three and four are starting to look like they might have different average weights. Okay, so another way we could incorporate diet onto a plot to help us figure out how the different weights respond to the different diets is we could make a box plot where we put diet as the categorical x-axis variable. That is, we put the different diets on the x-axis, and we put one new box plot for each of the diet's specific weights. And you can see that the medians, these horizontal lines in the middle of the boxes, are actually just slightly higher for diets three and four than are the medians for diets two and one. So it looks like diets three and four fatten up the chickens quite a bit more than do diets one and two. Okay, well, we've seen that violin plots are variations of box plots, and so it's pretty easy to get a violin plot sort of idea from this. And again, we see a similar sort of thing, that there's more chickens under diets one and two for weights less than 100 than there are for diets three and four. And the tails are a little bit fatter for diets three and four off to the right. The right tails of diets three and four are a little bit fatter than are the right tails for diets one and two. Okay, let's just try one more idea. If you think carefully, you'll notice that I have skipped histograms. 
Now, the reason is if you try to use the idea from above that we did for density plot, where we specify colors for the histogram, and don't forget your bins, we'll just start with 30 and see how it goes. It makes for a really ugly plot. Now, the reason is histograms are kind of filled in below all of the bars. All of these dark gray colors are filled in below all of the bars. So the best you can really do is kind of outline the bars appropriate to each of the plots. I think that's particularly ugly. So if you want to do two variables with histograms, I'm going to suggest that instead of colors, you add a facet. And now the layer that we're going to add is named facet wrap. And I don't think it's going to make much sense until you see what it actually does for us. So the notation you'll put inside the um, function facet wrap is tilde. That character is read as tilde. And it is shift button to the left of one. Shift button to the left of one gives you tilde. You go tilde and then the categorical or factor variable you want to use. And what you see is we get four individual subplots for the numeric variable weight, one subplot for each diet. And you can see a similar sort of thing, like the number of chickens with weights below 100 for diets one and two is a little bit bigger than it is for diets three and four. And the right tails, for diets three and four are a little bit bigger than are the right tails for diets one and two. So you get a similar sort of thing that we've seen already, but this is a way to do it in multiple plots. Now, in fact, once we get to more advanced plots, hopefully you can see this idea coming forward, but we'll hold off for now. You can mix additional layers like this and additional aesthetics like this to get really sophisticated plots. Let's just tiptoe into that water right now and see if we can do some sort of intricate scatter plot. So for a scatter plot, I need two numeric variables. And time here, although they are discrete values, they can generally be thought of as a discrete numeric variable. So let's put time as the explanatory variable for weight because we think that uh, the older you get, the more you're going to weigh. But look, we can also specify diet in this. And then the geome of point. Let's see if I can put that all in one line. I don't want you all to forget the open and close parentheses on geome point, so I'm just moving things over so you can see it. So here we go. We have two numeric variables on the x and y axes, respectively. So we're going to get a scatter plot with the geom point, but we're also going to color the points by the specific diets. So this looks a little weird because time is so discrete, you really only get these points at, in these columns. You really only get the points of the scatter plot showing up in the columns because the researchers apparently only measured the chicken weights at specific times. And that makes sense, right? There's only so much you can do to measure the chicken's weights, and you want to measure them all at the same point. But the issue that that's creating in our visualization is that a lot of these points start to overlap. So we're getting to a pretty good intermediate plot here. But there's an issue with geom point because a lot of these dots, a lot of the points actually start to overlap. It turns out some really smart people have thought of this already. And what you want to do is add a little bit of jitter to each of the points. So you'll take one of these purple dots and you'll just randomly move it over right or left. You won't change its y-axis value because that's what's important to us, weight. But you will change where it gets placed just a little bit left or right. And the next point down that's overlapped, kind of hidden behind this one, you'll move it a little bit left or right, but a slightly different amount. They call this jitter. And you'll move these, all of these points down here, just a slightly different amount than the ones before, left or right. And that will help you visualize all of the distinct points made up that were previously overlapping 
except now you still see them within the distinct time periods, and now you better visualize each individual point. And if you look closely at all of the colors here, you'll notice that diets three and four, blue and purple, are really showing up in the higher weights than our diets one and two, which are um, this kind of coral and green color. So you can see generally at the bottom, across all the different time periods, our diets one and two. And generally across the top are all the different time, are all the different diets three and four. Now this turns out to be a really good informative plot because it also helps you visualize control built into the experiment. Notice at time zero, all of the chickens weighed basically the same amounts. If you didn't start all of the chickens at basically the same point, then they might grow at different rates for reasons not attributed to diet. So I really like this point, even though it's a little bit noisy. It's a little bit loud because it really helps you see the control built into the experiment. Please go look up that word control under the principles of experimental design. The control here is all of the chickens started at the same time. We measured all the chickens at each of the distinct time points. And theoretically, they randomized all of the chickens to the different diets. So this is a pretty good plot in our intermediate plotting where we get to visualize one discrete numeric variable, one continuous numeric variable, and one categorical variable, also known as a factor.